from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of VMworld 2020, brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. I'm Stu Miniman and welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of VMworld 2020, our 11th year doing the show, of course, the global virtual event, and what do we love talking about on theCUBE? We love talking uh, to customers. It is a user conference, of course, so really happy to wel welcome to the program from the University of Pisa, the Chief Technology Officer, Maurizio Davini, and joining him is Thierry Pellegrini, one of our CUBE alumni. He's the Vice President of Worldwide, I'm sorry, of Workload Solutions and HPC with Dell Technologies. Maurizio, Thierry, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Stu. Thanks to you. All right, so Maurizio, let, let, let's start. Uh, the University of Pisa, uh, obviously, uh, you know, everyone knows Pisa, well, one of the you know, famous city, uh, I, I, iconic out there. Um, I know, you know, we all know, things in Europe uh, are a little bit longer. When you talk about, you know, some of the venerable institutions here in the United States, yeah, it's, you know, it's a couple hundred years, you know, how they're using technology and everything. I have to imagine the University of Pisa has a long storied history. So just if you could start before we dig into all the tech, uh, give us our audience a little bit, you know, if they were looking up on Wikipedia, uh, what's the history of the university? So, University of Pisa is one of the oldest uh, in the world uh, because it has been uh, founded uh, in uh, 1343 uh, by uh, a pope. Uh, we were authorized to do uh, university teaching by a pope uh, during the latest uh, Middle Ages. So it's really one of the, it's not the oldest of course, but it's one of the oldest in the world. It has a long history, uh, but has never uh, stopped innovating. So anything in Pisa has always been uh, a good for innovating. So either for the, for the teaching or now for the for the technology applied to. Uh, remote teaching or uh, calculation or scientific computing. So never stop innovating, never try to uh, leverage new technologies, a new kind of uh, uh, approach to science and teaching. Yeah, you know, you, you, one of your historical teachers, Galileo, uh, you, you know, taught at, at the university. So, you know, phenomenal history. Uh, help us understand, you know, you're, you're the CTO there. What, what does that encompass? How, you know, how many students, you know, are there certain areas of research uh, that, that are done today before we kind of get into, the, you know, the specific use case today? So, uh, consider that the University of Pisa is uh, a, a campus in the sense that the university uh, faculties are spread all over the town. Medieval town like Pisa uh, uh, poses a lot of problems from the uh, infrastructure point of view. Uh, so we have worked a lot in the past to try to adapt a medieval town to the latest technologies uh, advance. <laughs> now we have uh, 50,000 uh, students and uh, consider that PISA is a general purpose university. So we uh, cover science, like we cover letters, uh, engineering, medicine, and so on. So during the, the latest 20 years, the university has, has done a lot of uh, effort to build an infrastructure that was uh, able to develop uh, and uh, uh, deploy the latest technologies uh, for the students. So for example, we have a private fiber network covering all the town, 65 kilometers of dark fiber that belongs to the university, uh, four data centers, one big and three uh, little data center connected today at uh, 200 gigabits ethernet. Uh, we have a big data centers, big for, for an Italian university, of course, not for an US university that is, um, that hosts all the infrastructure for uh, the enterprise services and the scientific computing. 
Yeah, Maurizio, it's great that you've had that technology uh, foundation. I have to imagine uh, that the, the global pandemic, COVID-19, has had an impact. Uh, it, what's it been? Uh, you know, how's the university dealing with things like work from home? And then, you know, Thierry, would love, love, love your commentary, too. Uh, you know, uh, we, of course, you are not ready. So we were uh, uh, eaten by the pandemic, uh, uh, and we have to adapt uh, our uh, service offer uh, to transform from uh, uh, in-person to remote services. So we did uh, a lot of work, but we were able, thanks to the technology that we have chosen, to serve uh, almost 100% of our uh, curriculum studies from remote. We did a lot of work in the past uh, to move uh, to virtualization, uh, to uh, enable our uh, users uh, to work uh, uh, for remote, uh, either for uh, workstation or PC, or remote laboratories, or remote uh, um, calculation. So virtualization has uh, um, designed in the past our, our services. And of course, when we were eaten by the pandemic, we were almost ready uh, to transform our service from uh, in-person uh, to remote. Yes, yeah, too. I think it's uh, it's true. Like Mauricio said, um, nobody really was preparing for this pandemic, um, and and even for for Dell Technologies, uh, it was uh, it, it was a, an interesting transition. Uh, and as you can probably uh, realize, a lot of uh, the way that we connect with customers is is in person, and we've had to transition over to remote or digitally connecting with us customers. Uh, we've also spent a lot of uh, uh, our energy trying to help the community, the HPC and AI community, uh, fight the uh, COVID pandemic. We've uh, made some of our own clusters that we use in our HPC and AI Innovation Center here in Austin available uh, to genomic research or other uh, companies that are fighting the uh, the virus, uh, and it's been uh, it's been an interesting transition. I can't believe that it's already been uh, over six months now, uh, but we've we've found a, a new a new normal. Uh, Maurizio, let, let, let's get in specifically to how you're partnering with Dell. You've got a, a strong background in the HPC space, working with supercomputers. Uh, what is it that uh, you're turning to, you know, Dell and their ecosystem uh, to help the university with? So we are, we have a long history in HPC, of course, like uh, uh, you can imagine, not the biggest HPC like uh, you, uh, is done in the US or in the biggest supercomputer center in Europe. Uh, we have uh, several uh, systems for doing uh, HPC. Uh, traditional HPC that are based on uh, Dell Technologies offer. Uh, we typically host all kind of uh, uh, technologies that, that now is available, of, of course, not in a big scale, but in a small, medium scale uh, that we are offering to our, to our uh, researcher and uh, student. We have a strong relationship with Dell um, Technologies developing together solution to um, leverage uh, the, the latest technologies uh, to, the, to the scientific, uh, scientific computing. And this help has uh, helped us a lot during the research that has been done during this pandemic. Yeah, and Stu, I mean, Maurizio is, is humble, but uh, every time we have new technologies uh, that are to be evaluated, of course, we spend time evaluating in, in our labs, uh, but we, we make it a point to share the technology with Mauricio and the team at the University of Pisa. Uh, that, that's how we find uh, some of the better usage models for customers, help tuning some configurations, whether it's on the processor side, the GPU side, uh, the storage, uh, the interconnect, and then for the topic of today, of course, uh, with our uh, partners at VMware, uh, we've had some really great advancements. Uh, Maurizio and the team are a what we call a center of excellence. 
We have a few of them across the world where we have a unique relationship, sharing technology and collaborating on advancement. Um, and recently, uh, Maurizio and the team have even become one of the VMware certified centers. So it's a great marriage uh, for this new world where virtual is becoming the norm. Well, well Terry, you, you and I had a conversation to talk earlier in the year uh, when, when VMware was really GAing their full kind of GPU suite. Uh, and, you know, big topic in the keynote, uh, you know, Jensen, the CEO of NVIDIA was up on stage. Uh, VMware's talking a lot about AI solutions uh, and, and how the, the, this is going to help. So help, help us bring us in. You work with a lot of the customers, Terry. Uh, what is it that this enables for them and how to, uh, you know, Dell and, and VMware bring, bring those solutions uh, to bear? Yes, absolutely. It's one, one statistic I'll start with. Uh, can you believe that only on average 15 to 20 percent of GPUs are fully utilized? Uh, so when you think about the amount of technology that's our, at our fingertips, uh, and, and especially in a world today where we need that technology to advance research uh, and scientific discoveries, uh, wouldn't be fantastic to utilize those GPUs to the best uh, of uh, our ability. And it's not just GPUs. Um, our, I think the industry has, in the IT world, leverage virtualization to get to the max number of cycles for CPUs uh, and, and storage and networking. Now you're bringing the GPU in the fold and you have a, a perfect uh, utilization uh, and also flexibility across all those resources. So what we've seen is that convergence between the IT world that was highly virtualized and then this, this highly uh, optimized world of HPC and AI uh, because of the resources out there and, and researchers, but also data scientists and company want to be able to run their, their, their day-to-day -day activities on that infrastructure, but then when they have a big surge need for research or uh, data science, use that same environment uh, and then seamlessly move things around workload-wise. Yeah, well, Terry, I, I do believe your stat. Uh, you know, the joke we always have is, uh, you know, any, anybody from a networking background, there's no such thing as eliminating a bottleneck, you just move it. And if you talk about utilization, we've been playing the shell game uh, for my entire career of, let, let's try to optimize one thing and then, oh, there's something else that we're not doing. So, so you know, so important. Ritu, uh, I want to hear from your standpoint, you know, virtualization and HPC, uh, you know, AI type of uh, uh, uses there. Um, what value does this bring uh, to, to you and, uh, you know, key learnings you've had uh, in your organization? Uh, so, um, we, as a university are a big users of uh, VMware technologies, uh, starting from the traditional enterprise workload, uh, NVDI. We started from there, from there, in the sense that we have an installation, quite, quite significant, that hosts uh, almost all the services that the university gives to our, uh, to our internal users, uh, either uh, personnel or staff uh, or, or students. Uh, at a certain point, uh, we, we decided uh, to try to understand if uh, VMware virtualization would be good also for scientific computing. Why? Why? Be because with, at, at the end of the day, the, the request that we have from our internal users is flexibility. Flexibility in the sense of uh, uh, be fast in deploying, be fast in reconfiguring, uh, try to have the latest bits on the software side, especially on the AI uh, research. And at the end of the day, we, de we, we un designed a, a VMware solution like you, uh, I, can, I can say, like a, a whiteboard. We have a whiteboard and we are uh, able to design a new solution of this whiteboard and to deploy as fast as possible. Uh, at, at today, what, what we, we face uh, as, uh, as IT uh, is not uh, a request of the maximum performance. Our researchers ask us for flexibility. They want to be able to have the maximum possible flexibility in configuring uh, the systems. I, how can I say, I, we can deploy a small test cluster on the virtual, uh, virtual uh, infrastructure in minutes, uh, or we can use GPUs inside 
the infrastructure <coughs> to do uh, tests of a new algorithm for uh, deep learning. And we can use fast storage inside the vi virtualization to see how certain algorithms where they are internally developed uh, can leverage uh, the latest bits in, in storage like NVMEs or, or so. And uh, this is why at a certain point we decided to, to, to try virtualization as a, as, a, as a base for HPC and scientific computing, and we are happy. Yeah, I think Maurizio described it, it's, it's flexibility. Uh, and of course, if you think <clears throat> optimal performance, you're looking at bare metal, uh, but in this day and age, uh, as I stated at the beginning, there's so much technology, so much uh, infrastructure available that flexibility at times trump the raw performance. Uh, so when you have two different research departments, two different uh, portions, uh, two different parts of a company looking for uh, an environment, uh, no two environments are going to be exactly the same. So you have to be flexible in how you aggregate the different components of the, the, the infrastructure. Um, and then think about today. It's actually fantastic. Mauricio was sharing with me uh, earlier this year that at some point, as we all know, there was a lockdown. Uh, you can really get into a data center and move uh, different cables around or reconfigure servers to have the right ratio of memory to CPU to storage to accelerators. And having been at the, the forefront of this enablement has really benefited at the University of Pisa and given them that flexibility that they really need. Wonderful. Well, Maurizio, uh, my understanding, I believe you're, you're given a presentation uh, as, as part of the activities this week. Uh, give us a, just a, a final glimpse as to you know, what you want your peers to be taking away uh, from uh, what, what you've done. We are, what we have done is, uh, is something that is very simple in the sense that we adapt uh, some uh, open source software uh, to our infrastructure in order to enable uh, our, uh, syst our system managers and users to deploy HPC and AI solution fastly and uh, uh, in an easy way uh, to our VMware infrastructure. Uh, we started doing uh, a, a sort of POC. We designed a test infrastructure early this year, and uh, and then we we go fastly to production because we are happy about the results. And so uh, this is what we present in the sense that uh, you you can have a, a lot of way to deploy uh, virtual HPC, but uh, we we go for we went for a for a um, for a simple and, and open source solution, also thanks to the, uh, our friends of Dell Technologies in some parts, that enable us to do the works and now to go in production. And as Thierry uh, told before, it helped to us a lot during uh, the, the pandemic due to the fact that we are stuck at home. Wonderful. Uh, Thierry, Thierry, I'll let you have the final word. Uh, what, 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 what things are you know, drawing customers to, to, to really dig in? Uh, obviously, there, there's a cost savings. Are, are there any other things that this unlocks for them? Yeah, I mean, cost savings, we talked about flexibility. Uh, we talked about uh, utilization. You don't want to have a lot of infrastructure sitting there and just waiting for a job to come in once every uh, two months. Uh, and then there's also the, the world we live in. Uh, I know we all uh, live our life uh, here through a video conference uh, or at times through the interface of our phone and being able to have this uh, web, pay, web base uh, interaction with a lot of infrastructure and at times uh, the best infrastructure in the world uh, makes things uh, simpler, easier, and hopefully brings science uh, at, uh, to, to the fingertip of our data scientists without having to worry about um, knowing every single detail on how to build up that infrastructure. Uh, and with the help of the University of Pisa, one of our centers of excellence uh, in Europe, uh, we've been innovating uh, and uh, everything that's uh, been accomplished uh, for University of Pisa can be accomplished by our customers and our partners around the world. Thierry, Maurizio, thank you much for, so much for sharing and uh, congratulations on, on, on all you've done building out that COA. Thanks, you. Thank you.
Stay with us. Lots more coverage from VMworld 2020. I'm Stu Miniman. And as always, thank you for watching theCUBE.